G'day and welcome to A Down Under Yarn. Today is Sunday the 22nd of June. It's about five, 20 past 5 in the evening um, here in Minneapolis. I know I recorded last night with my friends um, but I did want to do another episode just to catch up a bit and share my um, purchases before I um, get home and put them away. I've spent, you can probably hear in my voice, I've actually spent most of today um, just so, so happy that tears have been coming, <laughs> they're coming again now, but I'm, I thought I'd record, but I know that that is something that I can do to help recapture the memories, um, of this last week. And in doing that, um, share with you some of the joy and the excitement that has been the zombie apocalypse. So I am your host, Fiona, also known as Fifi Kins. I am also the dyer behind Solar Flare Fibres. Um... Let's just start from the beginning. I know I did a little tiny recap last night, but it wasn't very much. So I left home Sunday last week. My first flight was at 7 o'clock. I was told I had to be at the airport at 5.30. And when I got there, they said, oh, no, you didn't need to be here till 6.30. But, hey, I was there anyway. Um, so I got to the airport. I already hadn't had a lot of sleep. I'd been dyeing up quite a bit of yarn. Um, and in a, a, the weather... We've just had a really, really bad year, weather-wise. Um, lots of overcast days, and the last bits of um, yarn that I dyed up weren't drying. There were some that dried, so I did skein them up. Um, and in the end, I think I left about 10 or 15 skeins at home. And whilst I'm disappointed that I couldn't bring them, um, it means that I've got stuff for an update this week. So that is really, really good. So... I didn't finish packing until, you know, late Saturday night. Um, went to actually spent the night over at Mimmel's place because my mum was at my place and there wasn't room for me um, because I haven't cleaned up downstairs. Anyway, beside the point, um, and just got to the airport, was so excited, got on the plane to Brisbane, cast on some socks, um, did quite a bit, Got to Brisbane, transferred through to the International Terminal, straight on to the, um, straight on to the, um, straight it through emigration, I suppose it's emigration when you leave, um, into the Qantas Club Lounge where I was able to have a glass of bubbly and try and collect my thoughts. So then onto the plane to LA, that left I think about 10.30. And four hours into that flight, my needle broke. The cable snapped away from the needle. I did think of pressing the emergency button and calling for the um, calling for the pilot to put us down in Hawaii so I could get another needle, but in the end I didn't. I thought, oh, what am I going to do? The chap next to me was asleep. I really didn't want to wake him. The lady on the end um, didn't want anyone in, sitting in between us and someone had had to move to go in there. So she wasn't happy herself, and I had um, some knitting up top that I could have gotten out, but it was just too difficult to. So I thought, I'll try and have a rest. Couldn't rest, watched a couple of TV series, um, watched a few podcasts, which was good. And then from there, just um, really, yeah, just tried to relax. The one thing that we discovered, we left late from Brisbane. And they said that um, you were not allowed to open the doors. We were due in at 6.40, I think. And they said 6.40 a.m. And they said that they were not allowed to open the doors until 6.30 a.m. So they didn't they didn't want to leave. They knew that we were going to make up time because we had a tailwind. They didn't want us to leave on time because it meant that we would be arriving too early and we'd have to sit on the plane. As it was, I think we had to sit on the plane for about 10 minutes before we were allowed off. So I got off in LAX. I went to... Immigration and Customs, I had to have my hand prints taken, my iris print taken, um, you know, questions about why I was here, that was all fine. Picked up my luggage through Customs, not a drama. I couldn't check my luggage all the way through um, to Minneapolis though from Cairns because I was allowed to have three suitcases between Cairns and, and LA but only two between LA and Minneapolis. So I knew I'd have some excess baggage and I, it was pretty expensive in Australia for me to pay it 
So I was I elected to pay for that here, which meant that I had to walk my suitcases from Terminal 3 right around to Terminal 8. And that was a fairly decent walk, which was good. It, you know, I was pretty exhausted because I hadn't had a lot of sleep on the plane. I think I'd had two lots of one-hour session type things. Um, and I'd been going since I don't know when. I, I was just so confused. I think it was about midnight my time when I landed in L.A. Um, so went and uh, went down to check in I couldn't find the lift um, which of course is called an elevator I asked the first person where the lift was and they anyway finally was able to get there there were people everywhere at United trying to check in my flight had been changed a few times when I went to do the automatic check-in it said that nothing matched up and I had to go over so I went over and I said look my flight leaves in an hour um, but apparently things aren't matching up and she said look if you go in this line you're not going to get through get someone to take you over here they're going to sort you out so they did that had to pay my excess luggage ran through security which was um, a lot more strict here everyone had to take their shoes off um, iPads were out of bags everything was out um, fine tooth comb and there was one thing on the flight over we were told that it's out it's US law that we weren't allowed to congregate near the bathrooms um, we were meant to wait until someone until someone had come back but that was really hard when you had four or five people wanting to go so yeah it was I think most people waited until there were just two people and I think that was okay so things have changed a lot um, flying let's just say so I get into Minneapolis at about I think it was 2 33 o'clock in the afternoon and I hadn't had I I didn't know whether or not I was going to buy a SIM card, um, but then I thought I might just rely on wireless. And I tried to get wireless at LAX, and I just couldn't work it out, and it was meant to be free wireless. And even though I clicked different things, it kept asking me for credit card details, and in the end, I just left it. So I got here, and I was waiting for my luggage, and I was able to get onto wireless. And Haley and Lisa, my two very, very good friends from the Knit Two Together podcast, had messaged me and said, you know, they rang me, or they vibed me, and they said, oh, where are you? And I said, I'm at the airport. And I said, how's Wisconsin? They said, oh, it's, a, it's quite a nice day, you know. And I'm thinking, oh, that's good, because I was seeing them on Monday. And they said, oh, look, you know, just let us know that you found – we're worried you might not be able to find the shuttle. Let us know when you found the shuttle. So I got around there, and, of course, by that stage I'd lost wireless. So I thought, that's oh, okay. I got in the shuttle, got to the hotel, which is actually the one I'm staying in at the moment again, opened the uh, – the, the, got out of the shuttle – walked around to get my suitcases out, put one of my suitcases on the ground, and a voice behind me says, do you need help with your luggage? And it was Hayley. And it was just, it was just, I think everyone could hear me scream. I'd been talking to people on the shuttle bus, um, and they thought it was quite strange that I was coming to a knitting retreat, um, but, and that I was meeting people that I hadn't actually met in the flesh before, but I think they heard me scream. I think the whole of um, Bloomington heard me scream. And then Lisa came out as well, and, that was probably the best thing that could have happened because it was 3.30 in the afternoon. I was exhausted. I felt like it was like 5 or 6 in the morning and I had hardly slept. And all I wanted to do was go to bed, but they kept me awake. And we went down to the – we drove up to Walmart so I could see what Walmart was like. Um, and that was just strange. Anyway, went – came – drove around, couldn't find anywhere to eat, so we thought we'd eat at the Outback Grill that was here. But it was Father's Day in America, so there was a bit of a wait. But that was okay. So it meant we didn't get out until about 9, which meant I was able to go straight to sleep. They went off and recorded their podcast. I went straight to sleep. I woke up at about 2.30 in the morning, and um, they weren't asleep yet. And so we sat up and chat for about an hour, and then went back to sleep and woke up at 10. So it was a really, really good sleep for me, getting all that sleep, getting all that rest. Um, and meant that then on Monday we went to the Mall of America, which is huge, really, really big. Um, I'm trying to think, to compare it to something in Australia, I mean, I've been to Chadston. I'd think it's probably about as big as Chadston if you've been to Chatty. Um, yeah, th uh, three floors full of shops. I didn't know any of the department stores. Um, I got my nails done, had a pedicure, which helped me feel a bit more human. Um even though it wasn't the best pedicure. I've got really cracked heels now. I think she shaved off far too much skin, but that's beside the point. Um, 
And she didn't dry my nails properly before she put the gel coat on top. So they bubbled in there. But hey, whatever. Anyway, so um, again, we came back. We went to Outback again. We got takeaway this time because we got another Blooming Onion. Um, the menu there is not probably typically Australian, but it was still fun to go there. So then Tuesday, we were meeting Josh and his sister Kira. We drove out there to get them. And the plan was to go to Stephen B's yarn shop. Um, that is apparently a Minneapolis um, must do for any knitter. And I can see why. I do need to grab that. Actually, uh, that's over in a suitcase somewhere. So that I will show you that probably when I get home. That could be part of my at home showing you. Um, we went, where did we go for lunch? We didn't actually do lunch in the end. We none of us were really hungry. We'd had we'd had a big breakfast here at the hotel, and I think we had some snacks in the car. So went to Stephen B's. Um, went to a tea shop with Josh first, which was quite nice. Then went to Stephen B's, and we're looking around. and Haley and I were taken up to see the spinning area upstairs and to look at all the roving. And I was so tempted by so much of it, but in the end said no. And just as we were leaving, Stephen West comes up the stairs. So we say, hey. And then we went downstairs. And then Josh, we met Stephen B himself. And Stephen B, we asked him if um, if Stephen West was able to come down. He said, oh, of course he can. Of course he can. So Stephen West came down. And Josh had told me that he was probably going to be there. So I'd taken along a skein of Dragon Scales. I think, no, it was Dragon Scales or Sea Glass. I think it might have been Sea Glass in the Soul Base. And gave it to him. And he said it was just lovely. He really liked it. We had fun pardon me, had photos taken and that's all on Instagram. If you have a look back through my Instagram, I think my Instagram photos are mainly of people and food. Um, <laughs> really? Anyway, so that was really exciting. Back to the hotel here. We ordered in a pizza for dinner, which was the biggest pizza I've ever seen. It was, I think it was 16 inches or 14 inches or 15 inches, whatever it was, it was massive, absolutely massive. Um, and needless to say, you only needed one slice. And even then it was hard to eat one a whole slice. We tried to get some sleep because we knew Wednesday we were heading down to Rochester. We had to wait for Heather, who's bunny fish, to get in on Wednesday. And so Kira and Lisa and I went over to the Mall of America whilst Josh and Haley caught the light rail round to the airport to meet Heather. Because that seemed, instead of paying parking, that was a really, really good idea actually. So I finally met up with Heather and decided to head straight down to Rochester. So we did and we got to the hotel and we walk in and we see Amy and Megan and it was just, it was pretty surreal. It's just, I think you see people who you've seen their podcasts or you've seen them online or you've VKN'd with them or you've exchanged conversations through Ravelry and things like that, replied to them in Ravelry threads or they've won prizes on your podcast and things like that and you see them and it's just, it's just amazing. I, I was trying to work out um, today one of the reasons I was so weepy. And when I got, I've been off to the Mall of America this afternoon again to pick up some stuff for the kids and then came back here. And I thought, because I opened up my computer and all these people are in it, but to actually be able to physically be with them, if even for a short amount of time, it was just something really, really, really special. And it, it just gave me the opportunity to be with knitters. And I'd been to Bendigo last year, which was fantastic, but it was totally different. And to, to take part in some of the classes that I did, I did um, two at a time knitting, which is probably how I'm going to do my next socks. I did, what else did I do? I did the woolen spinning class. Well, I actually looked, audited that class because I didn't have my wheel with me. I tried out some of the wheels that were there and there were some really fun ones. Um, I, I went to, there was another class and I can't remember which one I went to, but again, oh, Jenna's Designing Socks for a Stitch Dictionary. Genius class. And these classes, I think some of the things I learned were not necessarily what the class was all about. So, for instance, in Jenna's class, she was being on using variegated yarns for socks and she said, you know, even if you're just doing um, simple lace, it you can still do that on variegated yarn because you're still going to be able to see the basic eyelets and the basic shapes. So that was just really, really interesting to, to observe that. Um, 
then to, to meet people like I did that's right, I did retro lemons class and I can probably then move into my finished object which is all but the alien and you can see there he's got the eyes from Amy eyes Lucas who's Celtic Lucas if you saw us oh yesterday in the podcast we had the panda Lucas couldn't make it to the ZK this year he went on the waiting list quite late and didn't get offered a space until right near the very end and just couldn't get time off work and couldn't come which was really sad but we took like a flat Stanley which was the panda and the panda went everywhere and the panda had lots and lots of photos taken um and Lucas does the Annie eyes and I had some put them on here so I love this and I had this as a shop sample this is knit out of my Walla base I think this one is actually the thickest Walla not Walla the Zoya base thickest Zoya um but tips from Jenna were just fantastic and again you know your toys don't have to be perfect and she has knit so many toys which is why she now knows where to put arms and how to position arms I did exactly as was mentioned but my arms are at the same spot because one of them I flipped up the other way and I can see exactly what I've done now so again just a really really awesome class and I came out of it with an orbit which was well fantastic I didn't come out of the class with an orbit because I was still knitting on it but still I got that done um so that was my knitting basically at the ZK apart from my socks which I didn't finish and this was for my swap partner so if you're my swap partner Lane if you're watching which I don't think you are but hey um you might want to look away I do have a hoe so this was cast on in on the plane from Brisbane this is the Mystic Spiral Socks by Josh Rick sort of a knitter um I finished this one I haven't got my sock because they're actually still in a suitcase I finished this one um I finished this one I think Monday or Tuesday um after casting it on on Sunday and cast on the second one I fin actually I finished it on the way to the retreat whenever I finished it I finished it um, I'm in the final short row section here and that's how far I got with the second sock and apart from not having a lot of sleep throughout the retreat I think it was also just a lot of knitting time was just spent talking with people and and having conversations about their kids and about their families and about you know events in their life that you know of um, through Ravelry or through Plurk or through Twitter or through social media and you know being able to make connections with people um, you know catching up with people like Retro Lemon with Diane from Knittables, SO Waters who are just the most loveliest loveliest people Steve from Dramatic Knits um, we had a time we didn't have much of a conversation but when we did it was great and it was great to see his yarns in person and he and I did a swap in the marketplace which was fantastic so you know oh it, it was just so much fun um so that I don't keep going on and on and on I think the food was food's been pretty amazing um, I'm going home with blocked arteries and my pancreas just complaining because of all the sugar and the stuff and of course my stomach's complaining something chronic because I really shouldn't eat gluten and I've been eating quite a bit of gluten this week which means my tummy's sort of ooh so I'm going to go home and have to ooh. um our goodie bags we got our goodie bags and some of the dyers who were in the marketplace had been asked to dye up a special skein that went in the goodie bag so they'd done that I got a skein from 716 knits um who's Jenna and beautiful beautiful skein but what I had already arranged to do was to divide to with three other people two other people was to divide up the yarn so I could make knit a tubularity by Martina Ben with all the retreat colorways from this year which is something I was really looking forward to doing so I have these here now just in this bag here some of these aren't um, some of these aren't from the I'll try and pull the ones out that are from the bag so you can see them this first one is the 716 knits and everyone was given the same inspiration picture but I suspect on different monitors it came through differently so that's the 716 knits which is what I had so that's a third of the ball left I then have this one here which I believe is from Fiber Nymph let me quickly double check that yep Fiber Nymph on the bounce base Minnesota Nice so that's the variegated from Fiber Nymph this one is which one's this one mystery here cyborgs craft room 
which was a really, really pretty one as well. Um, in the Asocolate, which is 7525, Land of Sky and Blue Waters is her colourway. Then this one here is Sun Valley Fibres. And finally, from the uh, vendors who did colourways, um, we have Lady Men Fibre Arts in the You Betcha colourway which is an MCN base. So that is that one there, which has quite a bit of white in it, which again is different. So these five colorways were the retreat, the official colorways that Amy and Megan chose to put in the goodie bags. Um, and all a bit different, but inspired by the same thing. So there's five. Then there, of course, there was mine. And oh, Administrati, there, the thread is still open for the 300 member drawing. Um, to enter into the thread, you can we, I will dye you up a skein of this yarn, or if you already have this yarn from a ZK, I will give you something else. So this was mine, which was the Jet Lag Zombie colorway. Then this one here, which is a bit special. This is the Undead Winifred from Marigold Jen which is a lot more purple, which is again just beautiful. And that is sock weight yarn, 75% merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina. And finally, Dancing Dog Dye Works. And of course, Michelle did the most beautifully bright um, skein there. So I'm not sure when I'm going to cast this on, but this is going to be my retreat memory. Um, I thought a tubularity was probably a really nice way of doing it. I came up with the idea and a couple of other people said it was a great one so they've gone along with me. Um, so that's just something that we've been able to do. Now I didn't tell you that my socks are currently living in. I've just seen, I've just found, bless, um, I don't have the pick though do I? No. That's okay. Um, I gave out little koalas to everyone. I took all these over and I had a little toothpick in the back that had the solar flare fibers and the Down Under Yarn podcast flags on them. So that was my button. So that was kind of cute. This I had pre-ordered from Kitchen Counter Crafter, who is the amazing Java Jenny, who I went on a road trip with to Wisconsin to pick up um, uh, Christine. I was thinking Catherine. I knew that was wrong. It's Christine. Um, this is her zombie bag, which has zombie eyes on it with some beautiful knitted um, trim, which goes on through to the inside. And it has that amazing um, zippy stuff that you used to, you know, the wristbands you used to flick around your wrists at school with a clip and a beautiful band and special ZK 2014 little doobie dangle trinket ink. So that was that. I had pre-ordered that. Um, I had also pre-ordered, I don't know if it's here, no that must be over there as well. You can see I'm a bit disorganised. I had arranged, I suppose a pre-order, I had arranged with Rista, who's Girl Cave Bags, Rista 1313. She said, this is the only elephant I've got. And I said, it's perfect. So we did a swap for that. So she got a skein of yarn, I got an elephant bag. I, that's a really good swap. I did pick up a Stockinet Zombies bag from Amy's mum. I can't remember the name of her shop, but it doesn't fit on my head. It's a sock bag. So here it is. It's on there. The Silver Shed. That's it. Um, and that's a beautiful padded bag. So, oof -da. That's another nice memory I've got. Absolute Wonder, who is a free spirit, who's a lovely, lovely person. I did a swap with her, and I got a spinning bag. So it's lined with... Um, slinky fabric with beautiful ladybugs on it and it's got a drawstring in here so you can drawstring it closed with your fibre in the middle. So that is pretty fantastic. Um, I think that's all I got in the way of bags apart from another one which I will show next week because it's over. It's got something in it. I can't remember what. Anyway, what to next? From uh, Be Lighted Fibre and Gifts, which is a Minnesotan 
LYS who came along to the um, marketplace yesterday. I got this beautiful twig shawl, shawl pin from Yule, Jewel Yule. So that is something that will again remind me of this. It's a tiny twig lace stick in white alloy. Um, handmade fair trade in Indonesia. So again, something I'm looking forward to using. Right, Cloud Lover was there. So I picked up two braids of fibre. Fibre? Fibre? I picked up this one, which is L Lemuria in Rambouillet. Hand painted Rambouillet. Beautiful blues and greens. And then I picked up some Polworth Winter Rose, which is really my colours. It's the pinks and the greens. And the. Um, some really bright greens, some lighter greens, some silvers, and of course the pinks all through it, which I really, really love. Next, I think we can probably move to beautiful Sheep Dreamery. Oh, Kelly is the most beautiful person, and it was lovely taking a class with her and having her sit behind me, even though we didn't actually say very much. Um, but yeah, really, really lovely. This is a single of hers. It is the Kedges colorway in 100% superwash merino, single, single ply, 400 yards, sock weight, Oh, sorry, the hand dyed colourway is Lakeside, so it's Kedges base. And it's actually a lot bluer. I'm not sure what's going to do. That's probably a lot closer to what it actually is. I'm not sure in or out what's going to be better. I'm, I'm inside with artificial lighting, so yeah. So that was from Sheep Creamery. I did almost buy a sweater's worth, and then I thought, no, I've actually I bought a sweater's worth at Stephen B's. I don't need a sweater's worth. Um, I can't remember if that was a trade or not. I know this was a trade. This was from Beautiful Spartacus Dyes. Again, meeting Mary Gale was just lovely and we did a trade. Um, this is Where Blue Where Blue Birds Fly from The Wizard of Oz. And I mean, I adore rainbows, so you can imagine how much I just loved this. And you can see the gold sparkle that's through there. So again, it's her rainbow colorway. And that will probably become some socks, I would think. From, got to keep that one there, that one there. Some of these aren't for me. So some of them I've got, I've got a couple of things for swaps, so I'm just going to keep them away. Um, I don't need to show you. <sighs> 716 Knits. Meeting up with Jenna, having dinner in, with her a couple of times and lunch with her. And she is just the most amazing person. So willing to share and to give advice um, and calls a spade a spade so you know where you stand at all times and just fantastic. I picked up Care Bears with Fangs which is the colourway I went to pick up which is black with like neon stripes through it and in the glitz base which I just adore. It's 63% superwash merino, 20% silk, 15% nylon, 2% polyfibre, um, about 420 yards and it's a USA fibre as well. And apparently the glitz in it is actually aluminium drink cans. So there you go. I also got from 716 Knits part of a sloth kit. So this is a Xander kit. Um, this was the little, I got the natural for the face. Xander is the sloth that Jenna Retro Lemon designed. And I already had the pattern. So I didn't need the pattern. So I was able to get the yarn. And I got Miss Minchin's Select Seminary for Girls, the 716 Boss Space, which is gorgeous, with the cream for the face. I have some purple eyes somewhere. Not sure where they are, but they're around somewhere. Um, Sun Valley Fibres, Jeanette. Again, lovely meeting Jeanette. And I got more rainbows. This is Over the Rainbow. Um, it's an MC, MCS, so Merino Cashmere Silk, fingering weight, 400 yards per skein. And just lovely, really, really nice colours in there. And again, rainbows, can't go wrong. And of course, we're still going on. Um, Cyborg's Craft Room. I'd never really been to Cyborg's Craft Room before. I hadn't caught any updates been there. I'd seen, I'd seen it on podcasts. Wow, just gorgeous and amazing yarn. I picked up After the Storm. I actually swapped for this one. So this is After the Storm. And... You can see in there the depth of colour she has is just phenomenal. That I mean, this one has all sorts of different colours, you know, a rainbow but through the dark clouds. So that is just awesome. 
it was amazing meeting the beautiful Jennifer who is Daisy Knits and I'm so glad I was able to get this this is called Wicked Coal and the funny thing is that I kept picking this up on every base so I knew it was meant to come to me and I got the Dewy Sock which is Superwash Merino Nylon Selena about 400 yards so that is that one and again beautiful purples and greens which will probably become some socks at some stage um, then Marigold Jen oh Marigold Jen another person oh here are the eyes that I got sorry the purple eyes for the little sloth that I will create at some stage Marigold Jen I picked up Punkish, which is the sock weight yarn, 100% bare felt superwash, 655 yards from 155, 150 grams, wash gently, dry flat. Um, this one here, so again, purpley, purpley, sort of a really dark purple, and I'm hoping to knit um, Jenna Retro Lemon's shawl in that that she released at the ZK, which is just beautiful. I also picked up from Marigold Jen Fairy Dust in the sock weight yard 75% BFL 25% nylon 464 yards um, this is fairy dust and you can see it's blues with specks of orange and pink and different colors in there and just beautiful <sighs> then and this is not all because I've done quite a bit of swapping as well some of these I did buy so for instance I bought the fiber nymphs dye works I wanted to get her Minnesota nice which was her um, colorway um, for the retreat but this is in the self striping so really pleased to have that in the bedazzled base 75% superwash merino 20% nylon 5% selena 438 yards which is a fingering weight yarn that will become socks leading men fiber arts really lovely to see their stuff in the flesh um, and yeah good to see them so I got their you betcha which is the colorway in fiber in the pole with base so I'll spin that up <coughs> and I also got, uh, which I traded, the Concealed Elixir in the Spotlight Base, 80% Superwash BFL, 20% Nylon. Um, that's actually a bright turquoise. Um, that is showing up as blue, but it is really turquoisey. And even that's not showing it up. So I'm sorry about that. Um, hopefully I'll be able to snap a photo to put up on my thing. Marigold Jen brought along a hobbledyhoy bats. Um, from her daughter who does those I got surface tent bats which is merino silk bamboo and sparkles in beautiful bright colors which is just lovely and I'll be able to practice my long draw with that finally from my there you go anyway sorry finally from the marketplace cyborgs the no, grinning gargoyle um, which is just amazing. I picked up mink lace, which is 100% mink, uh, 650 yards, 100 grams in the goth chick colorway. And that is a beautiful, that's a pretty accurate representation of it in purple. Just stunning. And she was wearing a shawl knit up from it and it was really soft, really fluffy, and it blocked really nicely. So that is that. The hat I'm wearing is from my swap partner, um, Lane, who was just lovely meeting her as well. And this is, can't remember but I'll let you know then what I won in door prizes um, my name is drawn on the second night and I won three skeins of northbound knitting um, who I had never had much to do with before they're superwash merino sport 100% superwash merino approximately 274 yards per 100 grams in the chrome colorway so that is blues and greys which is just sorry me it's not funny there should be enough to do a a little cardigan with that um, a sport weight cardigan so that one's that one and then last night my name was drawn to win some I actually won some um, Manchester sock from into the world beautiful colorway but my good friend Heather won this one from Fable Fibers and it's got cashmere in it and Heather is allergic to cashmere so we did a swap so I got this um, Fable Fibers the novel 600 yards per 150 grams 80 10 10 merino cashmere nylon and it's just beautiful so that is that one and it says it's a one-of-a-kind as well which is even better um, so yeah I think 
that is all my acquisitions from the marketplace. And it was great to be able to go there and not really spend a lot of money because most of them were swaps, which was really good. As the solar flare fibers at the marketplace, I was overwhelmed with the support I received. Um, I'd had people telling me, you know, don't fret, your yarn's really fantastic. I was a nervous wreck yesterday morning. I really was. I, 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 I just didn't know how I was going to be received. Um, I was in a corner, which actually was a fantastic place to be. And I just, I was able to, um, sorry, I'm sitting on the bed here. And I was able to um, just, I suppose, show people my yarns and have the ooh and ah over them. Even people who didn't buy them came past and said how lovely they were, but they were either out of money or out of room, which was fine. I did have some leftovers, but I sold enough to cover airfares for next year, all my accommodation for this year, and my yarn costs. So I think that means that I can definitely say I'll be back next year. Um, some of the stuff that I had left over, I gave out to podcasters. Um, so it should be turning up as prizes because it, it seemed like a great idea to do the th people who were there. Um, and it saves carding at home. I was also able to um, sell some to Jenna, who is 716 Knit, who is setting up a yarn truck in the Buffalo area of New York. So my yarn will be on her truck, um, which again, very excited about that. And that was my first wholesale order, my first um, foray into that. And when I get back, that's something I'm definitely looking into. So I think that's it for this episode. I, I see I feel a lot chirpier now that I was able to share all of that with you. The only other thing I am going to share with you is the beautiful bag that my really good friend Hayley made me as a gift. Hayley made bags for everyone and she knew I loved rainbows. So I got rainbow lining and these are fully reversible bags. But what she did was because I'd come the furthest, she'd made bags for all of her really good friends and I got fabric from all of them, which is pretty, pretty special. Um, so I've got the grey from Josh's there. You can see I've got the roses um, from Kira's bag, I think it was. The paisley from Heather's bag. The 716 logo from um, Jenna's bag. And other bits and pieces that are in here, made with love. And it's just, it, it is really precious. And I think we've convinced Hayley that she can make these and sell them because they are really, really fantastic. Um, it's got my iPad in it, that's what's in there. So I think that's about it. Um, I'm not sure when I will podcast next. I do have some other acquisitions that I will be able to share. I've got my Camp Loopy project I need to get done, and I can do that this week. So I need to finish the other socks that I'm working on, cast on my Camp Loopy, get that done, and then... Um, Camp Loopy 2 starts on the 1st of July. For that, I am knitting a sweater for Bendigo. So I've got three weeks to knit that. So that's going to be a bit of a mad rush, but I will get there. I think that's about it. Thank you all. To the people who are at the ZK, thank you so much for making it such a positive experience. And, you know, I've been, my mantra today has been don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. And, that's what I've been trying to do and it's been really hard at times because it's been the most amazingly, wonderfully fulfilling and affirming event that I've been able to go to. I really hope I can come back next year. Um, it will depend on a few things, especially if I can pick up some further work um, and then get time off. <sighs> oh, just to, to meet so many wonderful people. To have people come up to me and tell me they watch the podcast, um, yeah, and to the, this morning even, people saying, oh, I've watched your podcast from last night. So again, thank you very much. I, tomorrow I fly out, I leave Minneapolis at 3.30, I've got to be at the airport for 2, I'm hoping to have a big sleep in in the morning, and to probably get to the airport a bit early. Um, I've picked up presents for Image and I haven't got anything for Jasper, I don't know what to get him. He's really hard to buy stuff for. Um, but hopefully they'll have a t-shirt at the airport and that'll probably cost the same as it did in the Minnesota shop in um, Mall of America. If I do wake up early, I'll probably go down to um, Mall of America quickly to pick up some final stuff. I don't know. But until then, 
Um, safe travels everyone else who's heading home. I think most people are probably home by now. And I will catch you when I'm at home. So until then, uru. Bye. Cheers.